Greetings from the Jazz Cloud. I'm Richie Zellen, and I want to welcome you to the Jazz Guitar Channel. A few days prior to this taping, I was saddened to learn that Chick Corea, one of the most influential jazz musicians of all times, had passed. So I decided to dedicate this lesson to his memory. And to do so, I transcribed the first three choruses to his solo on Bessie's Blues off the Chick Corea Acoustic Band recording. And this is one of my favorite solos, and I'm eager to teach it to you because I believe it showcases how Chick reinvents one of the simplest and most essential progressions at the root of all jazz, that is, the blues. And for those of you who might not be familiar with this piece, Bessie's Blues is over a basic 1-4-5 blues progression and was written by John Coltrane. But the first thing I'd like to point out here is how Chick adds his own twist, both to the harmony and the melody. Let me show you. So when Chick plays the melody to uh, Bessie's Blues, he does it something like this. So he really adds a lot of bite to that uh, note because he couples the uh, flatted seventh on the melody with a uh, 13th uh, half step below it. <laughs> very dissonant, but very cool. I first heard Jim Hall do that on guitar several years ago, and he, he did it a lot on different recordings. Now, as far as the harmony goes, in the turnaround where we would normally have the five going to the four to the one, Chick plays so he plays the five chord or the G7 four chord F7 and then he goes to an E major sharp 11 Talk about a deceptive resolution. <laughs> but if you want something um, a little bit simpler to learn the melody than listening to Chick's version, I recommend you check out my video. It's called Bessie's Blues, and it's part of a series of 10 videos I did on easy blues heads. Now that you have an idea of what's going on in the harmony, I want you to hear the first solo chorus as originally played by Chick. Next, I'm going to play it much, much slower. Notice that I've adapted it to the range of the guitar. And although not every nuance and effect is possible, especially the piano trills, it still sounds good. And there is a lot for us guitarists to learn and incorporate into our vocabulary here. Before I proceed, I want to recommend that you download the special study package I've prepared for this lesson so you can follow along in practice. It features a PDF with regular notation and detailed tab of the solo, MP3s of me playing it, as well as a backing track and a band in a box file for those who have the software. And this is available for download for a very nominal contribution from jazzguitar.richiezellen.com. Dot com. Next, let's listen to Chick playing the second chorus. Now, 
Now, I'm going to play it for you much slower, and in the first four measures, I want you to notice Chick's development of a motif over various rhythmic cells consisting of an eighth note and a dotted quarter note. Immediately after that, on the fifth measure, you'll hear a very cool line in fourths. This, by the way, is over the four chord, which he is substituting with a dominant sus four chord. And if you're a guitarist, you've most likely been exposed to this when listening to Wes Montgomery playing the blues. <laughs> and finally, over the last four measures, Chick plays some voicings and fourths and totally departs from the original changes. And I want you to remember this when you listen to the third chorus, and that way you'll have a better understanding of how he gradually builds up his solo at the same time taking it further away from the changes. Oh, and by the way, Chick played these voicings with his left hand uh, in a piano register that sounds too muddy on the guitar. So I'm playing it an octave higher, but it still works though. Next, let's hear Chick playing the third chorus. Remember how I said at the beginning that Chick takes a simple blues progression here and reinvents it? Well, pay special attention because that's exactly what he does here. In the first four measures, we heard Chick playing over a one dominant sus4 chord and a 4-7 dominant sus4 using triadic motifs over a rhythmic figure consisting of two eighth notes and a quarter note. And this is what I like to refer to as the Jingle Bells rhythm cell. And that way, my students immediately can recall it. So, two eighth notes and a quarter note. Da 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 da, jingle bells, jingle bells. <laughs> Measures five through eight go in and out of the changes by superimposing various scales and arpeggios. For example, if you analyze the first half of measure five, he plays an arpeggio that can be identified either as a D flat major or B flat minor seven. In measure six, he is playing a scale that can be identified either as a B flat major or an F mixolydian starting on the fourth in order to fit the F7 sus chord. Measure seven and eight outline an A7. So instead of playing over the C7, he anticipates the A7 by a whole measure. Now the last four measures are a total departure from the original 541 blues turnaround. Instead of the G7, he is reharmonizing the ninth measure with an A flat 7 sharp 11. The tenth measure, instead of the F7, has him over a D flat 9, which is the substitute dominant of the original G7. And he finally gives us a hint of the one chord or C7 in the second half of the eleventh measure. By the way, that eighth note or G is the fifth, while the final quarter note, dyad, consists of a C and an E flat, which over a dominant is not the minor third, but instead an enharmonic spelling for the sharp nine. Let me play it for you next, really slow. I appreciate your comments, welcome your questions, and thank you for your likes. 
And if you enjoyed this lesson and this is your first time on the Jazz Guitar Channel, please be sure to subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you will be notified of my upcoming lessons. Meanwhile, here's another lesson I think you'll enjoy.